What's up everybody, raid testing back on the menu, and today we're taking a look at Mythic Taragru in the new raid Sanctum of Domination. Keep in mind this is not a guide on how to do the fight, and I will mostly focus on the Mythic part of the fight, what's new on Mythic, how and if it changes the overall approach to the fight, and my thoughts on the overall encounter. If you want to see more of the overall mechanics, you can check out my heroic video of this fight from the PTR. Time to play around with Anima Powers! Yay! And boy, Boy, has this fight been turned up for Mythic. There aren't a lot of additional mechanics, or really any for that matter, on Mythic. The only addition, if you will, is that whenever Taragru spawns a Forgotten Torment, it now spawns two. These are the circles with five orbs in them that we got to see during the heroic testing. One Torment that increases his physical damage done by 10% per orb, one that increases his magic damage by 10% per orb, and one that deals ticking fire damage per orb. And players can stand in the circles to soak the orbs, take these debuffs upon themselves instead. And on Mythic, these debuffs last until the Targur is defeated. Or do they? Hmm. However, apart from that, everything is just scaled way way up, as to be expected from a mythic fight. Normally I would say this makes it so you actually have to deal with the mechanics properly, and while this is still true, but it also requires you to have the correct anima powers on your raid to be able to properly deal with the mechanics. So while testing this on heroic, the anima powers were mostly a meme thing, but on mythic they make a lot more sense, and has a way bigger impact on the fight apart from just do more damage or healing. So a, for example, going back to the torments that you have to soak that lasts until the boss is defeated, there's an anima power that reduces damage taken by 99% for 3 seconds but also removes a random debuff. This works on the torments. If you don't have players with this, you'd eventually be overrun by torment debuffs and everyone in the raid would just be one shot by mechanics or the ticking fire torment. You will need players that are immune to fear and stun so they can soak the chains from the terror. And there are powers that buffs other players' throughput, like three players near you get increased damage and healing, or you drop orbs that players can pick up to deal more damage and healing, etc. A buff that will steal the enrage effect of the boss and take it upon themselves instead to increase their damage. So you're gonna want a few players going full turtle soak anima powers, and some that goes more support buffer, if you will, and the rest a combo of mostly offensive and maybe a defensive power. For example, I had the immune to stun and fear as well as the remove debuff anima power so I spent the majority of the fight soaking chains or mostly soaking torments and I could have easily fit in a buff anima power there as well to help out the other raiders to increase their throughput. Point of it all, the upscaling of all the mechanics and addition of forever-ish lasting torments and twice the amount of torments and just the sheer amount of damage you take on this fight emphasizes the need for more than just pick whichever anima power that does the most damage. And I for one am a huge fan of that. Now that being said, the fight is in no way, shape or form a complex fight with difficult mechanics once you start to figure out the anima powers and how they work, or more importantly how they interact with the fight. There will be cookie cutter builds for this when the raid is released and probably more meme builds further into the tier as player power grows, but as a first boss of the tier it's definitely a lot of fun. And I will leave a link with all the current anima powers you can use for the fight in the description description below. Now, if they could just allow us to kill the mobs that drops the anima powers at the entrance of the boss room, that would be great. Like legit, if you try to pull them up to the entrance of the boss room, they evade. So when you want to swap anima powers, you have to run around and get them, cause screw time efficiency I guess, who wants that? Cause in Torghast you have to run around and pick up the powers, you can't just stack them. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this first look. We'll cover all bosses on PTR and proper guides will be out once the raid is released. And on top of this, I am streaming all of the raid testing on PTR, so don't forget to check that out whenever there's raid testing announced. Otherwise, I am streaming all of our main progression once it's live on Mondays and Tuesdays. If you have any questions at all about this encounter, hit me up in the comments or become a patron and get access to the Stanky Discord, where you can get help with anything rating related. Don't forget the usual stuff, like, comment, subscribe and ring that notification bell, it really helps me out. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.